Hey everyone, it's Paul and Marcus. And today we're gonna to be talking about Battletech. Battletech Alpha Strike to be specific. The reason we wanted to make this video is because I think we can explain the very basic rules pretty quick, faster than a lot of the other videos. It's it's a tough task. I mean, my hope is most of the videos I talk about the basics are about 30 minutes plus. So this game is not really that complicated to get going. And this video really is, is here to kind of help anybody who wants to just jump in and kind of learn the rules as they go. So we're gonna go over some of the basics just to make this a lot less intimidating than it would be if you just opened up the rule book and yeah. wanted to get going. Uh, there's a lot of things in there that definitely sound like this could be a complicated game, but the play structure is very simple. We have a initiative phase, a movement phase, and a combat phase, repeat. And it's very basic. So what we have here is three mechs on both sides. These cards represent the mechs. The number in the top right represents the max point value. We decide on a point value, we pick mechs that are about the same within, you know, 10 points or 10% or something along those lines, and we get going. There's another aspect to this, which is the skill level. We've set four for all of them, because that's the default skill level for the numbers in the top right of the cards. If you were to pick pilots, uh, you would gain some special abilities and be able to change the skill level to whatever the pilot skill level is but this would also modify the point value in the top right. And there's a chart in one of the rule books that tells you exactly how you would modify them. And that can become a little complicated. Advanced. Yeah, if you were interested in, in really, you know, sitting at home, thinking about how you're gonna come up with those 110 points, this is really great because you can spend the time to, to do that. But if you're just playing with a friend, you can just assume, if you wanna play a quick game, you can just assume all fours, use the number at the top right, and just ignore playing these pilots. Yeah, the pilots, hi friends. Uh, these pilots add uh, some additional special abilities, which obviously if you don't use a pilot, you're not going to get to use in the game. But that's fine, because usually mechs have special abilities as well. And also, you know, unless you're playing a really advanced game or have some very advanced strategy, chances are you're not going to really have to utilize them, the special abilities, just to kind of get a quick game going. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to roll for initiative. Right. Both roll. I got a six. I got a no. Sorry, I got a... Six. Six, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you got a 10. So you have initiative, which means that I go first. Yep. The reason I go first is so that before Marcus goes, he can see where I move. And that can be a real pain. If I wanted to move behind him, he would then be able to move character that. And you, right, in most cases. So you really have to think this through if you wanted to strategize about it. I'm not going to strategize too much about it because I'm trying to explain this as quickly as humanly possible. Um, but there I move my guy. He has a movement value. If we look at him on this chart of six, no, yeah, six inches. I moved him three squares. The way we're playing this game, normally use a ruler, but you can also use the hex tiles which is from the original Battletech games. We are counting each hex tile as two inches. This can be a really effective way to work uh, if you have a small area uh, and that's how we're doing it here. So if I have a six inch movement, I can move three square or three hexes on this board. So now it's Marcus' turn to move. Four. And then take. Yeah. So. Uh, it's your turn. Now it's my turn. So we will go ahead, and this guy's got a large move of 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then move him. Two, four, six, eight. Marcus counts out the actuals and twos, and I just count out in hexes and. Assume we both say it differently. Yeah. I've got one more to go. I've got this guy. He has a movement of eight, so he can move four tiles. When you move, you can also change direction for free. So right there, we're changing direction, but you can't change direction any other way. If you do change direction, it's considered a move. So just keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't count any inches, but it is considered a move. They have these tokens for uh, denoting what your mechs did in the movement phase. So I'm gonna put ground. I suppose that's acceptable. I suppose I'll allow it. Mark has just put a mech behind me. It's fine, we have a small play area here. So, uh, but these ground tokens help you with the formula, the very basic formula of a determining attack in the next phase. So we've both moved all of our mechs. Now it's time to go into the attack phase. Now, because I don't have an issue to do. I will go first so Marcus can see what attacks I'm going to do before he decides what attacks he's going to do. Yep. So I will do all of those right now. 
Uh, we'll start with this guy over here. He is he has a skill of four. So I'll show you the table here. It's called Sator, S-A-T-O-R. This is what most people they see this and they're like, this is complicated. I don't know if this game's for me. It's not that it's not that complicated to play a simple game. And, and once you learn the table, it's really, really easy. It, even to do a more complicated game, in my my guess. And the, I can't really say from a ton of experience with it, but it's not insurmountable by any means. You'll see that right now. Basically, when I decide that I'm going to attack, I take my skill level. Then I take a modifier for movement. Uh, so basically, if I stood still, I would get a negative one. If I moved, it's a plus zero, so plus zero in my case. And then I have my target modifier, which is uh, my, because I was, I moved, it's my TMM. Uh, there are no other modifiers because there's nothing in the way. But if there was woods in the way, it would be plus one, you can see. Um, the other thing I've got is physical attack type. That's not, doesn't apply. Stealth doesn't apply. Range modifier, he's range two. L greater than six inches, less than 24 inches. So he's between three and, and 12 tiles. And so if I add these all together, I would get four plus zero plus my TMM, which is on the card. My TMM is four. So, 4048. Four, yep, there's no obstruction. No. And their range is 2, 9, 10. So, I'd have to have a 10 in order for this attack to land. Range is 2? Uh, medium? Range is medium. Okay. So, 10, ten or higher. And I got a 3. Oh, boy. Now, there's another way to play damage. We're not going to do it right now, I don't believe, unless you want to try this out, Marcus. But you can either. My guy could do, my mech here, the locust, could do 2 damage. I could roll the dice two times, one to see if each point of damage applies, and if I get over seven, or whatever, is that what it was, or six? No, or whatever the number, whatever the roll I need to get was. If I got over that for any of the points, oh, that's right, 10, for any of the points, then that a point applies, and, and so it gives you more of a chance to get damage in each turn. <clears throat> so, he did not get damage. I'm gonna now move ahead to my medium brawler, Warhammer 6R. He is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So he's technically still medium range. There's a tree in the way. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at this again. He has a skill of 4, 4, plus a TMM of 1, 5, 0 for moving, 1 for trees. So that's 6. And then 7, 8. He needs 8 or higher to get this medium range shot. So let's see what we got. 6. Did not hit. Now we've got... Uh, uh, one more guy right here that we could shoot with. One, two, three, four, five. He, he would have to be long range to get this guy. Uh, he might be able to get him over here. Uh, he would be obstructed. I would say that it is partial cover. Do buildings give... Well, he's taller than that building. I guess. Yeah. I think it, one thing that's crazy that it's hard to realize is in... Battletech, the scale of these mechs right. is really large. And these are official buildings. Official yeah. Battletech buildings. Now, do build our buildings, uh, are they different than trees? There are two, uh, well, it says terrain under other modifiers. Okay. And the terrain that lists are woods and partial cover. I imagine that this would be considered partial cover. Okay. Which is plus one. All right. That's my guess. Uh, there is a building table. All right. Alpha Strike buildings table. But that's if you want to do attack to the building. Right. Uh, I think it's more of a warehouse. Yeah. So I think I can attack you. All I'm right. going to go for it as being valid. Okay. We could go through the rules and, and explore it further. But sometimes when you're playing a quick game, you can make a quick determination like this. That's this mech is definitely taller than that building. If he was not taller than the building, you know, different story. But we'll take this guy. He has a TMM of four plus one. So five. Plus another one for so six, seven, eight. I need to roll an eight or higher. Well, here we go. Eight. Eight. All right. So he takes Sice all night. Right. <laughs> well, I, I just missed two. So eight damage. Or sorry, eight rolled. How many damage does he do? It's this guy, right? Yep. He does six damage. Is that medium? Mm -hmm. Six on medium? Six on medium. He's my largest guy. Really? Yeah. Now keep in mind, none of this damage or the effects apply until the next turn. So if Marcus were to get out because one of my mechs destroyed him, 
in this turn, he still gets to attack with that mech. Because the way that they play this out is that if you were to look at a real battle, damage would be dealt back and forth in an active, you know, like combat style. And they're simulating that by by how this game is played. So uh, it, even if I took out all of your markers, this wouldn't guy would not be out until the end of the round. Right. He's got plenty left, but I just wanted to explain that rule. All right, you go ahead. It's your time to apply dodge. All right, I'm going to attack with my atlas to this guy here. And I need a five or better. Actually, medium range, uh, seven or better. All right. All right, go. So, oh, no dice. All right, my next attack will be from this guy here. And that is my uh, Fire Moth D. And I need an eight or better. Seven. Man, dying over here. All right, as for my last attack, um, is he partial cover with the tree or from this guy? Or the building? Wait, wait, who, who do you want to hit? Actually, you know what? I'm going to attack this guy. Okay. And you get plus one for the tree. Yeah. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight or better. No dice. Oh, man. All right. All right. So that's the basic turn cycle. We'll now go back to the beginning and roll for initiative. Since this is just a quick start video, I'm going to go ahead and end here. But note that this is just a small part of Battletech, and there are so many different areas of the game that you can learn. Whether you want to get into campaigns, or using other types of equipment, or exploring different pilots and what type of special abilities they have, and how those strategies can affect your gameplay. All of that is possible by just digging into those different sets of rules and deciding with a friend, this is how we want to play. Other things too, such as, you know, can we move through buildings? Uh, the answer is no, but those are all in the rule book. And uh, even if you just start getting the quick start, you're gonna have a lot of information in there to get you where you need to go with Battletech. So really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Hopefully this was helpful. And until next time.